Welcome to Rockland Thunder Physics. Go Thunder! This is a video about how to solve static and dynamic equilibrium problems. We'd like to thank our friends at Pasco Scientific, James Jackson at Modeling Physics, WebAssign.net, and our friends Dr. Peggy Bertrand, Gardner Friedlander, and Martin Kirby. Rockland High School, where 91% of the AP Physics students pass AP Physics. These are some of the forces you should already know. The force due to gravity, the normal force, the force of tension, the applied force, static frictional force, the kinetic frictional force, and the drag force. Working second law problems, you should already know that step one is to draw a force diagram and a motion map. Necessary, draw a component diagram, and also, if necessary, to rotate the axis. You're to explicitly write F equals MA. Now, this is really important. You'll get credit just for writing F is equal to MA. The sum of the forces is equal to MA, I should say. You should write out Newton's second law in the horizontal and vertical directions. And finally, substitute numeric values where appropriate and solve for unknowns. Dynamic equilibrium problems are problems in which the object is in equilibrium. That means if you add up all the forces, the sum of those forces should equal zero. In one dimension, that means the sum of the forces equals zero. In two dimensions, it means the sum of the forces in the horizontal should equal zero. And the sum of the forces in the vertical should equal zero. An object is in dynamic equilibrium if the velocity is a non-zero constant, whereas before, static equilibrium was when the velocity was equal to zero. Let's look at this problem. This is the problem we're going to do together. This is a dynamic equilibrium example. The box in the picture is pulled at constant velocity. We want to find the force that the surface applies to the box, and we want to find the force of friction. So what we're first going to do is we're going to draw a force diagram and a motion map. So it's really important to recognize all the forces. The force of tension is pulling up and to the right, just like that. The normal force is, per, uh, is pulling directly up because it's perpendicular to the surface. The static frictional force is pointing in the opposite direction of motion. So this object would move to the right. So the static frictional force should be pointing to the left. And of course, the force due to gravity is straight down. Our motion map would look like this. We have constant velocity, so all the arrows point in the same direction. They're constant. Um, we know they're constant because it tells us the problem tells us they're constant. We show that by having all of the arrows the same length. And because the um, velocity is constant, we know that the acceleration is zero. So in this case, the acceleration is equal to zero because the velocity is equal to zero. I'm sorry, because the velocity is a constant. The next step is to ask yourself, are there any forces off axis? And the answer here is yes. There is one force that is off axis, and it's the force of tension. So we have to draw in its horizontal and vertical components. Remember, what we want to do is we want to draw a right triangle with that force that's off axis as the hypotenuse and the other two forces as the legs of a right triangle. And the inside angle should be the angle that's given to us. If not, we can calculate it. Step three is to just explicitly write out the sum of forces equals MA. Remember, very important because you're going to get credit just for writing the sum of the forces equals the mass times acceleration. The fourth step is to write out the second law equations in the horizontal and vertical directions. In this case, if we look at just the horizontal, we would have FTX and FS. So what that means is we would write out the sum of the forces equals the mass times acceleration in the horizontal. So we would explicitly write out this equation right here in the horizontal. The sum of the forces equals MX means we're going to take that force and that force, and we're going to add them up in this equation, and they should equal zero because remember what we said before, the acceleration 
is equal to zero in the horizontal direction. Then what we want to do is we want to look at the vertical. In the vertical direction, we also want to write out the horizontal, I mean the vertical equation for um, Newton's second law. And then we should identify the vertical components. In this case, we've got the normal force pointing upward. We've got the force due to gravity pointing downward. We've got the force of tension also pointing in the vertical direction. So these are the three forces that we know. And also, because there's not any motion in the vertical, they will also equal zero. The next step is to substitute the numeric values for appropriate and solve for unknowns. So what I want to do in particular is I want to look at this triangle, this right triangle that has a force that's off axis. We're told in the problem that it's a 100 Newton force. Since, it's a, we, know, since we know the hypotenuse and the inside angle, that should allow us to solve for FTX and FTY. In this case, since FTY is the opposite angle, we're going to use so and so katoa and solve for FTY as 100 newtons times the sine of 30. That turns out to be an FTY of 50 newtons. We want to do the same thing in the horizontal, but in this case, we're going to use the ka, oops, the ka of so katoa, and that's the cosine. So that's going to give us FTX equals 100 newtons times the cosine of 30 and gives us an FTX of positive 86.6 newtons. The reason it's positive is that it's to the right. Where FTY, and the reason FTY was positive because it was upward. Oops. I want to say that it was upward. Let's erase that with the eraser. And say that the reason it's positive is that it's upward. Now, FG, we know from the equation that from before that FG is equal to negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared times the mass. So that's where we get the equation of negative 490 newtons. It's negative because it is pointing downward. Okay, so let's do this now. Let's erase all this ink, and let's go on to the next part. Well, now that we know what FTX is, we can take FTX from here and plug it into our equation, and we get our 86.6 newtons. If we solve this equation, that gives us the static frictional force of negative 86.6 newtons. The negative meaning that it is pointing to the left. Let's look at what's happening in the vertical direction. In the vertical direction, we could take our value of FTY and plug it into there for our vertical equation. We could take our value for FG and plug it into there in the vertical equation and solve for the normal force. In this case, when we plug our values in, we get a normal force of 440 newtons and it's positive and that's correct because as it shows in the picture it is indeed upward thank you for listening or for watching this video